The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. The role of a woman in the society is to submit. Void control are the pills of the devil. Education is so fundamental to the development of a people. Hi, murderers. Simple as that. What am I voting for? Voting will change nothing. Good moon I see Kumo ye. God save the queen. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. We are simultaneously broadcasting on radio. We have a new radio station. Listen to me. I have been in radio station, but my God, I don't know what Sebastian trying to do. But it's a wonderful radio and TV station. The radio is called 105.3 FM, The Beat. So tell everybody that Freedom March is on, on air, radio and TV. Isn't God wonderful? Well, my name is Rodney Monker. My spiritual advisor, praise the Lord, is Bradley Rule. Bradley, but read a wonderful scripture to us. Yes, no problem, Mr. Monker. All right, the scripture for the day, um, we're looking at 1 John chapter 2. Um, I'm reading from the New International Version, 3 verses 9 to 11, and here's what it says. First John chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. It says, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or a sister is still in the darkness. Wow. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they're going because the darkness has blinded them. Here ends the reading of the scripture. Very powerful indeed, Mr. Michael. Indeed. You see our love for the brother is so important, Mr. Michael? It's Michael? so important, my yeah, spiritual that, That's something I always stress. Repeat every that. Day. Read that to yeah. me one more time. Yeah. First John chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Three verses, and I'm reading from the New International Version. And here's what it says. Anyone who claims to be in the light. Stop. Anyone who claims to be in the light. But hates a brother or sister. But hates a brother or sister. Is still in the darkness. Is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister. Anyone who loves their brother and sister. Lives in the light. Lives in the light. And there's nothing in them to make them stumble. And there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister. But anyone who hates a brother or sister. Is in the darkness. Is in the darkness. And walks around in the darkness. And walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going. They do not know where they are going. Because the darkness has blinded them. Because the darkness has blinded them. Damn. Very powerful indeed. Indeed, my spiritual absolutely, advisor. Absolutely. I thank God for you. you the know. word of God is quick and powerful. I thank God for and you. The scripture says it's sharper than any two edged sword. Wow. So here's what that means the effect of the sword. Yes. If you take it and you swing it this way, yes. you get an effect. If you take it and you swing it back the other way, the same effect. Wow. A double-edged sword. A double-edged sword. Oh, that is what if I grab that sword <laughs> and I swing it wrong and wrong my head? <laughs> what will happen then, my spiritual advisor? Then the word will be twirling around you, but you need to use it properly. I have a sword in my hand. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm going to use it well. Well, folks, Absolutely. I have a sword in my hand and I'm going to use it well, my spiritual advisor. That's what it says, yes. Well, I thank you <laughs> that's very the, much. That's the saying. Absolutely. I thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, folks... I don't know where I'm going to start from. So let me look at my 
topics because these days I need to be guided by a list of topics. Well, let's start off with the five Negro athletes. The Bahamas Football Association announces suspension of five players for doping. So that's what I'm looking at for a few seconds. And I'll read a little something because I have to constantly challenge the intellectual class, the free national movement, who is conspiring with international forces not only to put rape in marriage, but to turn the rest of our children into a bunch of dope heads. I know them, you know. See, I'm 61. And at 61, I remember when many of them were young. And all they did was smoke dope. They smoked dope in junior high. They smoked dope in senior high. They went to college. They smoked dope. They find a girlfriend. They smoked dope. They start having children. They smoked dope. Some got married, they smoked dope. In the marriage, they were smoking dope. Their grandfathers, and they still want to smoke dope. And some of them, they, their children and the grandchildren, they think it is cool. They're all smoking dope. And I have to challenge them, because I was angry when I was young, how a bunch of them was just doing up a bunch of foolishness. So let's look at what is taking place in sport because sports is very important to the development of young people, to the discipline of young people. Sports help to teach young people how to socialize and how to work in unity and in harmony. And then when the sport turns into an international arena, young people from one part of the world get to know other young people from the other part of the world. Suppose, for instance, I'll play international sports for a second. Suppose the Americans, their young people, used to play basketball with North Korea. It meant then that American young people and the North Korean young people would know one another almost on a name basis. You see how you can help to secure world peace? Because the young people know one another. They can pick up the phone and call one another. And to a very large extent, they'd be able to settle many disputes. Or they might be able to influence their respective government. And that could culminate in preventing serious outbreak of wars. So... These young men, right, their names are listed. Although it is published in the newspaper, I shall deny them the indignity of having their identity call on national radio and national TV. And the reason for that is we now know over a million people around the world and in the Bahamas listen to Freedom March. So I don't want to give them no bad publicity, even though their names are listed in the Tribune. So they were all suspended. But one of the Negro man, he was the most harshly one who was suspended. And ironically, in appealing the initial ruling that had granted him the same punishment as the other, Negro man number one, has been given four years away from the sports, while the others receive four weeks ban and $150 fines, all for testing positive for the banned substance, tetrahydrocannabinol, THC. Now I'm sure, because my biologist is not around, but it sounds like a substance that you will find in marijuana. That's how it sounds. It is being reported that Negro number one missed his out of competition testing while the others tested positive, accepted their bans, and move on. But Negro number one 
His case went before an appeals committee that increased the ban of four years. It is being reported that the appeals committee went with the FIFA statues and consequently increased the ban. Negro number one is taking legal action perhaps as far as the court of arbitration for sports in Lausanne, Switzerland. There was never any test. The whole situation stems from the BFA's agenda of conducting out of competition testing, says Negro number one. Lawyer Vincent Wallace Whitfield. If you go by the World Anti-Doping Agency, Anti-Doping anti Code, and FIFA, International Federation of Football Association, Anti-Doping Regulations, then these things are supposed to be conducted by the Bahamas Anti-Doping Commission and daily and duly appointed doping control officers and then analyzed by the WADA approved doping laboratory. I understand that the BFA wanted to send them to somebody and have their substances analyzed by a local lab. There is this situation in the Bahamas Federation Association's mind that he failed to present himself for a test. In January of 2017, they wrote Negro Number One a letter that was never delivered to him until June or July of 2017, stating he had failed to show up for his anti-doping test of which he had little or any written knowledge of what they intended to do. Certainly, none of the procedures of what one would expect to be followed was actually followed. They are saying that you failed to take this test, but the circumstances under which the test is supposed to be conducted are not clear. This is victimization in its rawest form being carried out by these guys and we are in the process of taking the matter either to the Supreme Court of the Bahamas or the Court of Arbitration for Sports. The BFA stated on its website that in accordance with mandatory pre-competition testing, FIFA anti-doping regulation and the WAD anti-doping code the Bahamas Football Association Appeals Committee decided to ban Negro number one for four years, effective January 22nd, 2018, for having been found to have committed an anti-doping violation. It stated that he cannot take part in any football competitions, cannot take part in any activities organized by the Bahamas Football Association and cannot enter any facility that the BFA owns, rents, or any facility that the BFA hosts games or tournaments. It stated that all football clubs will be notified, and the decision is final. The others were required to take another test before the suspensions could be lifted, and two have been vindicated. Two men. However, all five players were forced to miss the Confederation of North Central American and Caribbean Association Football Beach Soccer Championship and the FIFA Beach Soccer World Club, both held in the Bahamas in 2017. We want a clean, ethical sport. So when these things came to light through testing, we had to follow through on it, say, says BFA Vice Vice President Fred Lund. We had pre-competition testing for the CONCACAF Championships and the World Cup. And these are the results. Four of the guys went through the process and adhered to the requirements. 
but one of the guys wanted to take it a step further. The appeals committee upheld the decision because that is what is mandated in the guidelines. There are various punishments for different violations based on the Bahamas Football Association guidelines. If you're worried of testing, it comes up as a failed test. It may be viewed actually worse than you actually taking the test. The appeal committee went to the articles that were put out by WADA and FIFA and got the maximum. We just did what we were mandated to do. On the FIFA website, it states that the ban for missing a test could be as much as four years. It also states FIFA is not giving doping a chance. Together with association, clubs, players and coaches, as well as the World Anti-Doping Agency, FIFA is using awareness to combat doping. Doping poses a grave danger to all sports and there is no place for it. The BFA carried out over 18 anti-doping tests in 2017 ahead of the CONCACAF Beach Soccer Championships and the FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup. According to FIFA, VADA and Bad C, anti-doping rules, all players registered with the Bahamas Football Association must be eligible to be tested at any time and before any international game and or tournament. So that is what is taking place. I decided I would talk about that and to read the article in view of the fact that my party, the FNM, is quietly trying to legalize dope. What will happen to these young men when the FNM is successful in legalizing marijuana and then they smoke? Can we now accuse them of violating a rule of an association when the rule of law would be superior to any association rule? I don't know. I just thought I would say it. So you young people who are in sports, even certain medication, you have to be careful when you take it because it will show signs of doping. I had a distinguished physician complain to me how an American tourist show up claiming to be sick and then told him, told the doctor what would make him well. But the American did not know that this doctor was an intellectual extraordinaire. And when the American tourist prescribed his own drugs, the doctor cursed him out and said, listen, are you trying to get me to become a dope pusher? And he told the American, get the hell out of my clinic because what you are demanding of me is a controlled substance. And you are only to get that under special circumstances. That's drug smuggling. See all the things that people must tell me? Just come and tell me all kind of things. Anyway, you young people in spots, stop smoking grass. Don't mind what the government say. Don't smoke no dope. You hear what I say? Take good care. We'll be right back after the break. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. Expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. Welcome back to Freedom March. Welcome back 
The Freedom March broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker, and of course, Bradley Rule is my spiritual advisor. Bradley, welcome once again. Yeah, thank to you, Freedom Mr. Monker. Thank you. My, I have a journalist, well, he's playing journalist out there in the field, Rastanero Thompson. If I call you on my cell, the people then will not be able to hear you. All right? So, you should call into the studio. But just in case you're having a problem, I'm going to have the spiritual advisor call you. My spiritual advisor, while the camera's on me, go see what if he has done the breaking news. Go outside so we can't hear it. And if he has it, then have them call him so he can update us. I have young Ross De Niro, Kyle Thompson. He's out there doing some news for me, and he sent me a text saying I must call him. So do that quickly, my spiritual advisor. Well, folks, once again, we welcome you to Freedom March. We are on radio, 105.3 FM, The Beat. It is a glorious day, once again, in the Bahamas. As my people, the Haitian people, got another victory, a wonderful victory. And so I want Bahamians not to be upset when people born in the Bahamas are treated unfairly because the right honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram taught the Haitian them that whenever a government mistreat them, they should go to court. Hubert Ingram. He did it when he was prime minister. You remember? When immigration went down and he looked to unlock up all the Haitian people. And Papa told them so. That's what Papa told them. So it is a great victory. And I think it is good for our democracy. So please do not be upset. But I need to keep you appraised. Because what we are seeing here, and Hubert Ingram complained to me before he went to London. He told me how he was disappointed and how Brent Simonet was managing the Haitian problem. That's what he told me. And this was no secret. And I keep telling you that most of our leaders are of Haitian descent. Papa is Haitian, Brand is Haitian, Minister is Haitian, Perry Christie is Haitian, and I is Haitian too. So, we will always ensure that the Haitian people are treated fairly. But Papa is displeased with Brent Simonet. And I am authorized to say it. And who don't like what Papa's told me to heck with y'all. So let's look at what the Tribune says, because this is powerful. The immigration detention against the rule. It's unlawful. The Carmichael Road Detention Center. But I must point out that the Carmichael Road Detention Center was built by the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. Papa told me it was him who built it. So I'm looking at today's Tribune. I'm looking at the Negro reporter, Nico Scavala. And let's see what Nico reports. A Supreme Court judge has ordered the unconditional release of five persons and two minors from the Carmichael Road Detention Center after ruling they were all unlawfully detained by immigration officials between November and December of last year. Justice Gregory Hilton, in four separate rulings, ruled that Kedisha Benjon, Gaina Genot, Veranti Makop, and their respective children, as well as Ancelette Curry, were all detained contrary to the provisions of the law and that their continued detention would be unlawful. Justice Hilton said the Department of Immigration did not appear 
to have utilized the procedures specified in the Immigration Act for reasons best known to themselves. When dealing with these individuals and that there is no other basis upon which they could be held and detained. Justice Hilton also awarded costs to those individuals to be taxed, if not agreed. He also ruled that another applicant, Michelot Marilyn, who was detained by immigration officials on December 7 and released days later on the Titan when a writ of habeas corpus was served on the officer in charge of the detention center, would not be entitled to cause as the proceedings should have been brought to an end after it was indicated to the attorneys for the applicant that the applicant had been released when a writ was about to be served. Attorney Fred Smith, QC, representing all of the above individuals, said after the hearing today that Justice Hilton's ruling represents another great day for the rule of law in the Bahamas. It is an affirmation that the rule of law exists in the Bahamas and that people have rights, he said. Earlier this month, Justice Hilton, in three separate judgments, ruled that Emmanuel Simon, that Emmanuel Simon, Merlin Corville, and Farnell Garçon were all detained by immigration officials contrary to the provisions of the law between October 2017 and January of this year. Regarding another detainee, Ricardo Johnson, who has a spousal permit, Justice Hilton ruled that his arrest and detention from November 2017 to December 8, 2017 was unlawful. However, he dismissed Mr. Johnson's writ of habeas corpus application as he was released from custody prior to the issuance of the writ on December 8. Regarding William O'Neill, who was born in the Bahamas, Justice Hilton ruled that while the original arrest by immigration official on January 8, 2018 was lawful, he could not have been detained for any more than 48 hours, thus making his continued detention up to January 23, 2018 unlawful. So it's a great day, and therefore I celebrate with the young people born in the Bahamas of Haitian descent, and I call upon them my Haitian people in the shanty towns, rise up, go forward, and claim the victory. My Haitian people hiding in the bush, come out of the bush. You are entitled to justice. Oh, my Haitian people, I shall be coming to the shanty town so I can dance and celebrate. Lord, I thank you that there is the rule of law, that no one have to throw rock and bottle. There need not be any fight. All you do, you go to court. The judge look at the two sides of the case. He listen to what Carl Bethel Dem is saying, and then he listen to what the QC on the other side is saying. And look how the rule of law is maintained. Oh, Campe Buki. Campe Buki, wap dome. Campe Buki, Campe Buki, wap dome. So, I can celebrate. I'm a citizen of the Bahamas. All right? And I'm a citizen. And I can celebrate with the new incoming citizen, my people, the Haitian people. I yearn to come to the shanty town. I yearn to come in the back of the bush so we can beat the tumbo. My spiritual advisor, what a wonderful day in the country 
For my people. <laughs> when you say beat the tambour, what do you mean? The drum. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's a different culture. But you what know, what different a- culture. We are all Africans. Okay. Huh? You stop it. Okay, Mr. Monkey. Here we go again. But you know what? You have my drums. Goodness me. Hey! Mr. Bass find these F and M's in here. Hey! Mr. Producer! You have to watch me. Because the drums of the bush should have been beaten so that I can go off and visit my ancestors. <laughs> oh, my people. I see yeah. moi. My people, Haitian. It's a wonderful day. And until Brent Simonet stop breaking the law, we're going to collect every dime out of the public treasury. It's the rule of law. Okay? And I want the rest of the Bahamians to relax. Hubert Ingram complained to me that he did not like the way Brent Simonet was dealing with this matter. And Mr. Ingram was particularly upset because he showed Brent Simonet how to do it. Papa told me. And before he went to London, he authorized me to say whatever I want to say. So I want the Haitian to know that Papa is one of us. Isn't it powerful? Well, we're a country of laws, Mr. Monka. This is powerful. And the law is the law. I, I can tell you, I think I heard somebody mention um, that not because you're born in the Bahamas means that you're um, entitled to citizenship. Don't mind Brent Simonet. But apparently the Constitution says something different. Don't mind Brent Simonet. Brent Simonet, we will be Bohemians if we have to beat the drums of Haiti. You hear me? We will be what? (laughs) Anyhow, Mr. Monk, if you're born in the Bahamas too, and both of your parents are foreign, I think the line that I looked at in Article 7, I think it was um, Section 2 of of the Citizenship Act, right? It says that upon attaining the age of 18 and within 12 months thereafter... Where is my drum? It says that... um, I need to dance. I need to dance. Don't don't forget your thoughts. What do you celebrate, man? I'm celebrating the victory. Where is the drum? Huh? They're not going to be able to... Y'all will either have drum or I'm going to sue Freedom March. I'm going to sue somebody. (laughs) Either Sebas or somebody. My Haitian drum. My African drum. Because get the drums, man. Spiritual advisor today. I want you to put aside... And I want you to join me in dancing. How does it sound? <laughs> You're not going to dance? Ah, oh, boy, I tell you. We got to dance, man. All right, well, the law is the law, Mr. Monka. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Mr. Monka, be careful you don't break up the studio, man. <laughs> My people! Pep Moyo! No game! No game! No game! Ah, boy. Uh. Man is powerful. Wow. Listen. It's a wonderful day. I feel so emotional. My God, my people, day by day, we are coming out of the bush. We are coming into the sunshine. We are coming out of darkness. And we are usurping our rights to citizenship. And Brent Simonet, you better be careful. You hear me? Because one day, one day, Brent. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Yeah, um, actually, oh, actually Article speak. 7 um, does state that if you're born here in the Bahamas and both parents are foreign, that at attaining the age of 18 or 12 or, or within 12 months after, that you are entitled 
to be registered as a citizen of the Bahamas. And of course, there's... Man, find that music again. And of course, there's a provision that says um, um, once you are not um, the holder of a passport of, of another country, you'll have to renounce that passport. Come on, man. Music. Music. Oh. Come on, Spiritual Advisor. Yeah, Come on. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on to the... Hold on, man. I'm celebrating. <laughs> Oh boy. Come on! Come on, Spurs. Let's go. No, Take man, it. I, I, I'm not celebrating with you today. Man. <laughs> oh boy, tell you. Oi! Mr. Monkey, you're 61, you know. Be careful, man. Come on now! Every Haitian grab a fly! Man, I'm dancing! Oh, la, la, la. Oh. The paramedics downstairs. It's the paramedics downstairs. This might be 61, you know. You better be careful. Bring me a hyphen flag! <laughs> oh, boy, tell you. Listen! Go to TV! Go to Facebook! Yes, Radio Land, I'm dancing! 105.3 FM to beat! I'm dancing! Oh my heart! Can huh. I tell you? Huh. You better slow down. Listen! Listen, y'all get paramedics downstairs? It's powerful! Tout mon aïe! No gay! G. Brent Simonet! Si pas mette citizenship, nous allons na cop! Ah, it's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day. Be careful, day. Stella. Be careful. You're not a 19 year old anymore, man. You're 61, all right? Oh, my spiritual advisor. Yeah. Well, it's it, a wonderful it is day. what it is. It is what it is. We got to fix it. We got to fix it. Yeah. People born here in the Bahamas, we have to, we have to fix that. Yes. Yeah. Give them citizenship. Yeah, we have to fix that. Yeah. It's simple as that. So yeah. it's a wonderful day. Fred Smith, listen. When you finish winning all these cases, you must come on Freedom March. Let's celebrate. We just declare one day Haitian Day. Isn't that powerful? Huh? Haitien Jou. Jou de Haitien. Ah, spiritual advisor, are you proud? Are you happy? I'm a Bahamian, man. Of course. So am I. Yeah, I'm a Bahamian. I don't and I need I don't more fight. Bahamians. I don't have to fight for my citizenship. Well, I have to fight for my citizenship. I was born here in the Bahamas. So was I. To two parents who were citizens of the... My parents were citizens as well. The English Commonwealth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm a Haitian. And after 1973, yeah. I was entitled to... Baby, even. Not entitled. You became it automatically, 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 man. Automatically, yes. Automatically after 73, yes. Anyway, yes. listen, you all behemoths. Don't get upset, eh? Isn't it wonderful that you could go to court and tell the judge how they lock you up? Huh? You think that is a good case? Look at the civil servant who the court orders that the government pay him $60,000. I think it's $60,000. When? The police unlawfully arrested him, and according to the evidence, put a whole gun to his head and her ladyship. Justice Charles ruled in his favor. And now Carl Bethel is going to have to find the money. Isn't that the way it should be? The rule of law. Citizen thinks he was not treated well. Goes to court peacefully. No violence. No cursing, no breaking up of anything. You just go to court. I just love going to court. You go to court, say to the judge, judge, this is what they do to me. Judge, look at the evidence. If he accepts your evidence, the judge rules in your favor. So it's a great day for the rule of law. And in every civil society, you need an independent judiciary. That's why Minis. And Carl Battle have made a serious blunder by not confirming Mr. Stephen Isaac 
as Chief Justice or someone else other than Carl. I don't want Carl to be Chief Justice. Okay? I even don't want him to be Deputy Chief Justice. So it's a wonderful day for the rule of law. And we must encourage all of our people who feel offended to go to court. Sometimes it's expensive, but you go to court. That's how it's done. Or you do like what I used to do. I run into some woman and they complain to me. They say the magistrate ruling and favor the man. I tell them, wake up early. I told them then when Chief Justice used to come to work, I say, grab your children and stand outside the back door. And you show the Chief Justice the children and tell him how the magistrate wouldn't order the weightless man to mind the children. And you bring pressure like that. So it's a good day. I'm happy for those people who were detained unlawfully. And there is a man who works for the immigration department. I've decided I won't identify him because Candia Dames was so kind to me on Saturday. So I'm not going to identify her common law, Bren law. I'm not going to do it. Candia is so nice. So my spiritual advisor, do you wish to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, somebody asked me to just read this quickly, right? Go ahead. Um, and let's see if we can understand what it's saying. This is um, Article 7, Section 2, Citizenship of the um, Constitution. Here's what it says. A person born in the Bahamas after the 9th of July, 1973, neither of whose parents is a citizen of the Bahamas shall be entitled upon making application on his attaining the age of 18 years or within 12 months thereafter in such manner as may be, be prescribed to be registered as a citizen of the Bahamas, provided that he is a citizen of some other country other than the Bahamas, he shall not be entitled to be registered as a citizen of the Bahamas under this article unless he renounces his citizenship of that other country, takes the oath of allegiance, and makes and registers such declaration of his, of his, of his intentions concerning <coughs> residence as may be prescribed. I mean, that's I, powerful. Yeah, I think it's that's clear. powerful, yeah. I think it's clear. At this point, I would like to shout out to one of the women them, Cecile Wallace. She works for BTC, and I was excited when she met me outside St. Joseph's St. Francis School. And she declared, my God, she said, Monka, I am one of the women them. Cecile, it was clear to me when I saw you asunder. And as you drew near, I said to myself, this woman is a saved woman. And I'm happy to know that you are continuously submitting to man's leadership. You are a good woman, Cecile. And then, of course, um, Sh Shania. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Shania Duncan. Forgive me, because I'm not good at pronouncing these big names. But I was happy to meet you. You are from grade 1M. And you are one of the children then. And then, of course, young Lyndon Jennings. Listen, when your pa told me he was a Jennings, I know some of the greatest Jennings. There is no Jennings greater than Robert Jennings. Robert Jennings is a field marshal. He's a good father, a good citizen. And anybody who is a Jennings, they must be good like Robert Jennings. He's a great man. So my spiritual advisor, slowly my people are being liberated by the courts. And it is a serious indictment. I can't wait for Papa to reach because he's going to be here by the weekend. You know, he's in London organizing the various um, Commonwealth countries and putting up new rules to govern elections. So Papa will soon be here. 
And if it is God's will, he and I will get together on Sunday and we shall have green tea. Papa, hurry up, come, eh? Because since you left, Menace has been signing contracts with fraudsters and gangsters. And Papa ain't pleased with these things. Take it from me. I am in communication with Papa, even if the communication is spiritually. When I return, you look at Bahama. You know, it's my favorite place now. But the sins of Bahama can find it out if Sandy Sands does not lead them to being accountable and transparent. You look at what the Tribune reported on the prostitutes and the management. This is Freedom March. Be right back after the break. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom Match, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. And of course, we are live on radio, 105.3 FM, The Beat. Well, folks, the Christian Council has succumbed to the FNM and the international forces. They met yesterday and they voted. Three of the saved men, they did not vote. They abstained. The others voted for it. So they have now concluded that a married man can rape his wife. So that is the breaking news. The Christian Council met yesterday and the majority of them voted for Carl Bethel to make the final decision as to whether or not when a woman come forward 12 months and say that her husband rape her, Carl, a young man like Carl Bethel will have the power to determine if a married man is guilty of raping his wife so that he can prosecute him. So that is what is taking place. Now that the Christian council has spoken, we married men, we must rise up and we must tell the FNM it's time that they put this matter to referendum. If Carl is man, if Dr. Menace believe in democracy, Put it to the people. Give the Christian Council an opportunity to vote. Now let the population vote on it. If you believe in democracy. And it will be defeated. That is the breaking news. That is the breaking news. I'll say no more on it. But I thought I'd let you know. Can you imagine this? Huh? The fundamental purpose of marriage is sex. It's for reproduction. And if we were not wired that way, all the people that you're seeing now, and all the people that you saw all day, and you will see tomorrow and in the future, marriage and sex is intertwined. Now Carl will determine if I am guilty of raping my wife, we're in trouble. When you look at the United Nations website, there is nothing on it that talks about marital rape. But watch what is happening. Watch what is happening. Many of the pastors are influenced by FNM contract. And next week, I'm going to wait for Hubert Ingram to come so I could fire the first scud after that no good weightless pastor who got the contract. All right? I don't think God would be pleased with that. It's all kind of corruption. All kind of corruption. Huh? How the church can tell if I rape my wife? How are we going to know that? 
Huh? Anyway, let me not sin. Let's deal with Bahama. I just had to break that to you. All right? Had to break it to you. I knew we were in trouble when Bishop Simeon Hall collapsed. And the kind of man as Simeon Hall. Simeon Hall now believed man could rape their wife. And I always thought that Bishop loved Jews. Now he believes that. We're in trouble. Yeah, you don't have to be that graphic, though. M Mr. Mike, I think they're saying what you are missing is that apparently a lot of women have been complaining that about being an abusive mother. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. None of them, all of us live in the Bahamas. They don't have no knowledge that I don't have. There is no data to show that married women are being raped by their husband. They can't tell me nothing. I have more. But they I can show uh. them. I could show Delton Fernanda a divorce file. He don't know nothing about it. Watch out for me. Delton Fernanda cannot do costless search. And I could show him where one of the most influential advocates broke up a whole marriage. They better be careful of me. But, 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 but I'm telling you, the other side of the argument is that there are some women who claim that they have been abused by their husbands and as a result of that, coerced into sexual activity Listen to me. with a man who comes home at times. Listen to me. And, Listen to me. You know, Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Them. Listen to me. There has to be they some are, kind of data it, on it. They though. are dishonest. There's no data. Why would you marry... So why are we having this discussion? What you have here, there are some of these women who have married gay men. They thought they could change the gay man. That's what they thought. So women just marry gay men? How you men? I don't... I don't I, 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 I'm well, trying... If the man is gay, why marry him? I don't, you have to ask them. So the police catch the man opposite um, Arawaki and throw the Billy out of him in the trip. <laughs> Better be careful, man, with me. I don't. I don't. I, I, let's leave this. But that's one. with the. But that's the issue. And they so are liars. Yeah, there is well, no data. And so they're saying that what, no they, data. what what happened is they had to now make an adjustment to the Sexual Offenses Act, right? Which would include uh, uh, marriage because they they claim they're just some men who are taking advantage of their man, wives. Stop talking. I'm just it. saying that's what the Carl argument is. Battle is going to determine. Huh? I read that yet. Yeah. Carl, is, Carl is going to determine. Carl, not you Carl Bettel like. is the last man who should make a determination. Don't do Carl, that, though. Don't do what? No, just, well, just, just speak what right. Am, what am I speaking? I'm speaking right. Well, if he's the Attorney General. I yes. Mean, you're saying it in a, in a funny way as if you're trying to infer something. I'm always inferring things. Yeah, but you don't do that. Just keep I'm, the I'm not doing anything. Just keep it on, on even keel. Let's, Let's, yeah. My he is the Attorney General. My spiritual advisor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only time we will understand this dispute is when there are names. That's all I'm saying to you. There is dishonesty. I am a man who do court search. All right? So when you do that, yeah. you know a lot of public information. All right? These are a bunch of weak men. But you know, the reverse psychology to this, and I just want you to hear me carefully. Go ahead, I, Mr. I, I had a conversation with a beautiful young lady um, on my lunch hour, right? And during the course of the discussion, this marital rape issue came up, right? And the mom, she's married. And, you know, she said to me, and I, I find this to be very interesting. She says, um, y yes, Bradley, um, there are times when my husband does rape me, but she say, the thing about it, that kind of sex seems to be sweeter than the other ones. And I was like, wow, I see. <laughs> I was like, I was like that, no, that's interesting. I mean, let, when let, you look at the other side let, of the discussion, I was like, Let's well, not talk this conversation anymore. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. Listen, that's, young that's people. That's what you told me. I would have told you to keep sweetheart, but I can't. Because one of the 11 contribution. By keeping sweetheart is prostate cancer. No mind nobody would anybody tell you. All right? So I can't advocate that you keep sweetheart because it will affect your prostate. So I can't. But we are in trouble. 
Absolutely. And if Minis believes in democracy, if Carl believes in democracy, let's put it to a referendum now. The pastors them, then talk. Now let's put it to the people. I Let the people determine. Will the government bring it to the people though? Because the first thing they said they were going to bring it before the Christian Council. Now, is the Christian Council going to make this determination for the people? Well, the Christian, which will be unfair, the, the, um, in my opinion. Delton Fernanda can't make no decision because I'm older than him. When I got married, he was either in primary school or junior high, depending on his age. But it, it so he can't make no decision but for it, me. It does seem as if the Attorney General Office is... is um, ready to listen to the Christian Council over the wider audience. In essence, they feel that if the Christian Council goes with this, then everybody else may, may, may fall in line. Yeah. I mean, that's may, that may be the thing, and I could be wrong. That, you are quite correct, but, but they're wrong. Because many of the pastors are not saved. So how could we get this to come to a referendum? Well, we have to demand it. But what is happening is that the United Nations knows that if it goes to a referendum, It'll be defeated. we will defeat it in Jesus' name. We'll be defeated, yeah. We'll defeat it. All right? We'll defeat it. Put it to a referendum. Let man and woman decide whether or not it constitutes rape. All right? Anyway, let's go to Bahama. Absolutely. At Bahama, the Tribune reports, the story is written by Eva Tynecrest. Eva Tynecrest is the niece of Peter Tynecrest, the Deputy Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's so important to know who these Negroes are when you read their articles. She said the two high level executives at Bahama were fired last week on suspicion of impropriety after an internal investigation was launched at the resort. The dismissal came in the same week. Two suspected prostitutes appeared in court following an undercover operation by police at the hotel. The two Colombian women, 31-year-old Joe Milan and 32-year-old Lady Jonna Mira, were charged on February 20th before Assistant Chief Magistrate Sabusola Swain with overstaying their visas and were fined $1,500 after pleading guilty. However, the court prosecutor said their arrest came as a result of a surveillance operation set up by Cable Beach police officers on Tuesday, February 17. Officers reportedly Turn the women over to the Department of Immigration officials after there was insufficient evidence to support their suspicions of solicitation. The women entered the country legally on January 9th with permission to stay for just nine days. Neither subsequently applied for permission to stay longer. The Tribune understands the women's arrests came as the gaming board made inquiries about at least one member of the hotel's senior management team. One source said one of the men fired last week had been under investigation in Las Vegas for, alleged, uh, for allegedly mishandling client funds and that the gaming board's investigation had started under the previous administration. It is not clear if the suspected activities of the Colombian women had any direct bearing on the men let go by Bahama. The Tribune understands at least two suites at the hotel may have been used to entertain high roller guests. When contacted for comments, Robert Sands, the resort's senior vice president of administration and external relations told the Tribune the two workers were let go after the resort became aware of, quote, potential misconduct, end quote. We became aware of potential misconduct and immediately launched an internal investigation. 
Mr. Sands said in a statement to the Tribune, as a result, two employees were terminated on suspicion of impropriety. The Royal Bahamas Police Force currently arrested two women who were charged with overstaying their visas. Bahama is committed to meeting the highest standards in all facets of our operations and requires all employees to meet these standards, Mr. San said. According to sources close to the matter, Bahama wrote to the gaming board last week informing the body of the dismissals for failure to fully disclose. Attempts to contact Kenyatta Gibson, chairman of the gaming board, were unsuccessful up to press time. Okay? Now, when Bahama wrote the gaming board, they allege that the two employees fail to fully disclose. And the question that we put to Bahama, are you today willing to fully disclose and tell the country what the facts are? Tell the country, we want a resort that is not going to hide in the dark, but will come into the sunshine and be accountable and transparent. Please do it. Sandy Sands, come on. You're the nephew of a former governor general. So I will turn quest. Your mother, brother. You are the son-in-law of the current governor general, Dame Margaret Pinley. You are the brother of the minister of health, Dr. Dwayne Sands. And you are my friend. So you are the friend of mine. Listen to me. I want you to come clean. Because if you don't, I don't know what can happen. I may have to wait until Papa come back. Because I know Papa like you all. Papa like Dwayne. And Papa like you. All right? But Bahama must be accountable and transparent. Because you may not be aware that there have been staff who has been terminated and they have been making serious allegations. And then all of a sudden, we've seen this development. All right? I'll say no more. Sandy, your brother's my doctor. You know? So I'm going to look out for you. But I need truth. For the truth shall set all of us free. My spiritual advisor, do you have any texts? Yes. Um, do you wish We got a few texts. We got a few texts. Um, wish to comment on the last thing you wrote? Yes, my spiritual advisor. Um, you know what? No, I, I changed my mind. I, That's when, good. I, when I When I did visit Bama, I saw one or two things happening. Let me just talk in code. So I we'll asked, talk in code and I will translate it to you. Yeah. For you. I was at what a did you see? I was at a restaurant, right? Sitting down having dinner with my daughter and so I noticed these some um, maybe Colombian ladies or maybe ladies from Panama they walked into the restaurant at the same time yes and so I said to the um, I said to the bartender I said mom who, who are those ladies I, said, I noticed they very beautiful ladies you know they were beautiful and they were with this particular high roller okay you know yeah and so I said to the bartender I say uh, who are those people are they models are they beauty queens so he say um no he say um, um stop yeah <laughs> so let me let me leave that yeah <laughs> that's interesting yeah i i stop you for yeah. that second yeah uh mr monica bring all your people from haiti so they can share all the wealth that the bahamas has to offer um and everybody else and all the generations to come will have nothing i hope you in return through your celebration they may turn on you. I loosen a lot of respect for you, Mr. Monka. You can't answer that text? Next. Um, good day, Senator. My name is Antonio Jennings. I want to give a shout out to my two daughters, Tony and Tonisha Jennings, for making the honor roll. Wow. They are Robert Jennings' granddaughters. Listen, okay. if they are Robert Jennings' granddaughter, 
They have brains. I've met no brain in the whole of BTC like Robert Jennings' brain. That's how I know if the children ain't his own. All of his children are smart. All of his grandchildren are smart. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Monk. I guess Fred Smith can now fix your roof, eh? Because he can stop, t- he can stop acting so ignorant. Whatever. Stop saying that. Fred Smith is not an ignorant man. You know how much money Fred Smith is reported to have donated to the FNM? One source said $14 million. And if any Haitian that Fred want here in the Bahamas, after spending $14 million, the FNM should give him at least one. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Monica. Do you realize there was a murder in the Yellow Gardens, Yellow Ella Gardens last night? Yes, there was there a was? Negro male oh, okay. who was murdered last night. Okay. It's a very sad situation taking place here. Did you ever speak to Ross? Yes, but the information that he gave, I don't think it'd be wise to give over TV. Okay, go ahead, right. my spiritual advisor. Um, so the murders continue, and with a hundred million dollars that the FNM borrow to pay off bad loans, Marvin Dames could have taken that hundred million dollars and hire half a Nassau to work on the police force. Go ahead. Uh, God bless you, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Advisor, is the world coming to an end soon because people don't want to get married now? And now, rape in the marriage and a number of households have single parents, which are women. That is not good for the country. The devil is working hard, Mr. Monica, oh, yeah. to destroy the marriage and the family. Mr. Yep. Monica, please don't forget to talk about Albany. I have not forgotten Albany. Don't worry. I shall talk about Albany. It may not be today, but Albany is on my mind. Don't forget, I visited there and I had a cultural shock. So it's taking a little while to get out of the cultural shock. All right? Uh, Mr. Monker, did you remember that you promised to tell us about this British QC and uh, Frank Smith case? Yes, we shall, we shall also be discussing that because the British QC has discovered something about these Negroes. But I don't want to say it yet, okay? Go ahead. Um, hmm. Sorry, let me let me just skip to that a second, Mr. Mon- yes. Uh, maybe you should have Mr. Wayne Monroe on your show to give us the latest developments on this case. Which case? Um, I guess the case where the QC is now coming to prosecute. Well, I was M- told that the Bahamas Bar Association objected. That is what one Negro source told me. I haven't had an opportunity to talk. To any officials, all right? But can't blame the government because what um, Minis want is a London train QC. And we know there is no QC like a London train QC, although the last one they bring in, he lost the extradition case. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Monken, your advisor. I also am losing respect for. Mr. Monica, because apparently he is a Bahamian, but he's always supporting the victories of Haitians. Um, I want to comment on that one. I won't even talk about um, Fred Smith. Listen to me. Those people took advantage of the judicial system. And if they take advantage of the judicial system and the court having heard the evidence and rule in their favor... I'm happy for them. I'm happy for them. And these are people who were born in the Bahamas. These are the new Bahamians. And I have a duty to give them the moral support. They ain't pick up guns. They ain't grab rock and bottle. They ain't riot. They did it the proper way. And I'm happy for them. I'm always happy when people do the right thing. After all, the Haitian people are my people. And I don't care who don't like them and who are willing to deny them. As long as I live, I shall never deny my people. And I shall love up a Haitian. For the Haitian people are my people. They belong to me. 
I love them and I shall continue to support them when they are being unjustly treated. Hubert Ingram told me, you know, so you got to watch out for me. Papa briefed me. And Papa ain't pleased. Hubert Alexander Ingram briefed me. And he's disappointed in Brent Simonet. All right? And you accept my word and tell Mr. Ingram, deny it. You heard who I told you said it? The right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. He told me. You hear me? Don't mind Brent. Do not mind Brent Simonet. So I'm happy for those who go to court peacefully. Lord, I thank you. Bless my people and give them more victory in Jesus' name. Beb Moyo, I see a monkey. Reme, no. This is Freedom March. I'll be right back after the break. Do you have something to say to the Senator? Call Freedom March at 323-7775. Toll free from anywhere in the Bahamas at 242-300-0045. Freedom March with Rodney Monter, only on ILTV. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV. And then, of course, we are also live on radio, 105.3 FM, The Beat. You see, I'm not used to radio and TV simultaneously, so you have to forgive me until I learn how to manage it. But there is breaking news. Members of the Bahamas Christian Council met yesterday, and they voted. They voted to, so, to su support Carl Battle and the FNM decision to put rape in holy marriage. Three of the saints who attended did not vote. So that is the breaking news taking place. I call on married men to rise up because we are supposed to be in charge of the women. For it is the man who pursue the sexual relationship. It is the man who is the aggressor and the enforcer. And so that is what has taken place in the country. On Saturday, I told you how the leader of the opposition, Mr. Philip Brave Davis, had a meet and greet for members bit of the media and those other personalities who were connected to talk show. And I was honored to have been extended an invitation. And then I was flattered when Candia Dames, she took a photograph of me. And for the first time, I felt that one day Candia is going to be a pastor. Honestly, I think she has a good heart. But sometimes the devil possesses her. But by and large, I think Candia is a good woman. And I yearn for the day when Candia will greet me as her leader. And she will tell me she's submitting. So I'm going to give her some promotion. Today in the Nassau Guardian, Candia has produced a good national review. Remember I told you? How Minnis was desperate? Well, now Candia also believes that Minnis was desperate. I call on every FNM to read the National Review. And of course, PLPs must not be fooled. You too must read it. Because Candia points out how Minnis talk with forked tongue. Minnis said, in this article, I'm going to read a little piece. i got to do this for Candia. Because I need the Nassau Guardian to make a couple of dollars. So that Candia could maintain her level of dignity. Because if the Guardian isn't making any money, I know Candia will end up here 
at okay. our news. That's what we name. New, um, um, Eyewitness News. So that's radio and TV station. All right. So what is, does Candia say? National Review. Desperate. Menace once railed against government doing business with unsavory character. And she quotes Menace. This is what Menace said in 2015. Quote, should we in the Bahamas go to bed with individuals like that? The only thing I can say is that I always remembered something my mother has said to me repeatedly. She said, quote, Son, always remember that birds of a feather flock together. How can a government issue a license to individuals of unsavory character? Now, when Menace sat down with Mr. Kruger, Menace has a defense. Menace didn't know that this was a fraudster. Menace didn't know that this crook had run off with $10 million from the British American Insurance Company. Apparently, Minis didn't know, but this man is responsible for the failure of Crico. All right? And he had forgotten a powerful philosophy that his mom taught him. And had he remembered the philosophy, he would have done due diligence. But this is what Menace scared. We warned Menace to watch out for Brent Simnett. But he let Brent fool him. Brent said, listen, I ain't going to try to be prime minister. I ain't going to overthrow Menace. So Menace dropped his guard and said, Brent, you do the due diligence. You think Brent ain't know this was a crook? Brent Simnett could smell a crook a hundred miles away. Now Menace got swing. A crook comes. Who name is not in the contract. You heard me? Name in the contract. And a man show up. And when minutes look at that man. And see that man had curly hair. A white man from America. Minutes them giggle. And they sign. You see how we can't depend on these fellas? They sign away our sovereignty. We're in trouble. Nobody, all those educated people, Carl got education. Carl even got color. I'm good here. My God, you mean to tell me they couldn't go on the internet and check this man out? And they say they smart? They ain't smart. At least minister could say to Travis. Travis? Still in school. He could say, Travis, you Google it. But that ain't happen. You hear me? An f &M who has 35 seats. You see how the people at Bahama mistreated Menace? Remember? Christopher Annan? When Menace took the whole cabinet in the back of Albany. And Annan veil up their backside. Veil up their backside because he recognized this group of Negroes are mediocre. And Anan, we got mad. We say Anan is a white man, he shouldn't do that. Which is true. Anan, you're a white man. And these are Negroes. And they're in charge of the country. You're supposed to play respectful. Then when they leave, you turn to Father McKenzie and just veil up their backside. But you insulted them up publicly with the media. And we all Negroes are upset. All right? But Anan told us. But we got mad with him. We say he's a white man. How dare this white man talk to our Negro government like that? And we were right to say how dare he did it. And by grab, a year ain't passed good. And another white man come from the state. His name is not on the contract. And many of them sit down. And they skin up their teeth. And sign the contract. But they say, I crazy. Isn't that amazing? They say, I crazy. That couldn't be pulled on me. That couldn't pull on me. Because when I look at that white man, the first question I was going to ask him is, you is a Kruger? <laughs> I was going to ask him that. I was going to ask him, what are you 
to the movie actor, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I'm just going to ask him that. And then the cabinet would say, you see, Monka's crazy. And by the time I finish asking him crazy questions, I had the case solved. <laughs> but Meniska intelligent. Forgive me. Forgive huh? me. All of them. These are smart people. All they run on with. They say, listen, Menace is surrounded by smart people. They say, run with smart. Everybody was smart. Just a bunch of smart Negroes. And the gangster walk in the middle of them and he look at them. Many saw Menace, he said, boy, if this man is the leader of the party and the prime minister of the commonwealth of the Bahamas, the rest of them are mediocre. And for those of you who don't know what that big word means, forget mediocre. He means mediocre. That's what it is. So, Candia, you're doing a wonderful job. And I'm going to stop cursing you out. Because I believe now you are beginning to find your way out. Oh, Candia, if only you would submit to me. Come, Candia. I is leader of the woman them. Come, Candia. Can you come? Can you come to me? I want to hold you politically. <laughs> what? What you laughing? What if I was a single man? Oh, Father, forgive Hold me. Hold a second now. <laughs> my, my first cousin married Candy's sister. So I know we monkers have good stock. And if I was single, and Candia <laughs> remained single, I could rap to Candia. You think so? Of course. Yeah. I gotta figure out. Candy on a different level, though. What? What? What level? She's on a different. Trust me. What she's do you mean? A, she's she, standing tall? No. She, Listen, I don't care how tall woman is. Yeah, she's on a different level. Man is always at the top. Well. So that's what what's is. going on. You have any texts? Yeah, man. We got quite Read a bit text, of texts. My spiritual advisor. Read we, texts. We got. So Bahama, a, you're still on my mind. I haven't spoken yet. There we go. Because I'm going through cultural shock. Um, good evening, Mr. Monka and uh, your spiritual advisor. Uh, Mr. Monka, you have your spiritual advisor sometimes. You need to take his advice. Sometimes because you and Ingram doesn't know anything. Ingram had his time as the prime minister. Why he didn't do what he had to do. Like what? He needs to go sit his tail down you stop that. and give Dr. Minnis a chance. Everybody deserves a chance. Papa is not interfering with Dr. Minnis. Papa isn't interfering. If Papa would interfere, Minnis would not be bucking his big toe. You hear me? Papa need to interfere. You see what Minnis did? Minnis sat down with an ace crook. A man who destroyed Clico. Now we got thousands of Bohemians. Can't get their benefit. Huh? And you don't think somebody should talk to Minas? Goodness me. Uh, Mr. Monkey, you need to realize that Mr. Ingram is not God. So we need to stop our foolishness and stop complaining about our problems in the country and get together and find solutions to correct it. Um, I nor you nor Ingram can stop anything that's already been put in place by God. Love your show, but stop bashing after Mr. Monka because only them, because not only them mess up this country. Um, all the all because we put them in. Let's work together and let's stop bad mountain the F and M. At this point, I do a shout out to Mr. International Dion Delancey who is currently on Route 15A, and he has reported that his bus is full of my people, the Negro people. Dion, do me a favor and see how many of my people are Bohemians of Haitian descent. And if you discover, you say to them, Monke di Ireme no. Monke di, he loves you. Monke say, he loves you. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Uh, good evening, Mr. Monka, and your spiritual advisor. It happens, I happen to agree with the spiritual advisor today. I have no problem with immigrants as long as they go about it the right way. The people should not bother with them. But, Mr. Monka, you know I love you and listen to this show. 
right? But you need to listen sometimes to the advisor. Uh, the foolishness that you talk about with Mr. Menace, you say he's losing his head every time he speaks truth. But Mr. Bunker, um, they fired. So this is not a freedom of speech country anymore. Uh, Mr. Monka, what is going on? Okay, wow. I'm trying to grab my head. The with future text. of the Bahamas will depend on Bahamians to choose what they want to be: English Bahamians or Haitian Bahamians. Go ahead, next question. Uh, good evening. Um, God bless you. This country is in trouble, Mr. Monka. I honestly think that the men are to blame because people are having these children and there are no fathers, and mothers can't grow boys into men. Spiritual advisor. Also, people in high places are doing wickedness, and they think that God can't see them. The churches are being watched by God, and He's not pleased with them amen good afternoon mr advisor i normally agree with you on most things except that the opposition leader should apologize to the speaker what the speaker said w was said in parliament mr davis reference to the speaker was made out of parliament oh, okay well that looked like that's an old text mr Mo today good afternoon spiritual advisor mr michael could you let us know the hours eyewitness news is broadcast Eyewitness News will come on immediately after Freedom March. So Freedom March ends at 6 p.m. And they will come on immediately. The last time I checked, we are on radio. Are we on TV yet? We are just on radio. And listen here. When we get on TV, we got a big surprise for all the radio station them. You hear me? Because when we come out, we are coming out big and bold. Oh, yeah. And the slogan will be, we reach. <laughs> you hear me? Take it from me. I could imagine if they were to give me one of them thing, what you call them? And I go out in the fields to report. I witness report. So we can be big, my brother. This is the new generation of New. Journalism. Journalism, okay. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, Mr. Monka. Um, we were warned by Loretta Butler Turner and the rest of those who oppose Dr. Menace that he may be um, incompetent as the leader of the opposition, much less leader of the government. Um, well, well, don't forget, um, Loretta and those deposed them, you know. I helped to rally them. And they got rid of Menace. But Menace is back in charge. And he's faxing up things. Can you imagine it? A whole prime minister signing a contract with a man who is not linked to it and is an international crook. Man, Minister, I no shame, man. He should fire Brent now. Go ahead. Mr. Manker, you never got back to us with the promotions that you talked about. You never told us who was Simon on the front porch. You never told us if you found Carl's twin. And you never gave her the reward for the speaker's indigenous Bahamian wife painting. Nobody bring the, 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 the drawing yet for me to decide. Monka, what happened to the original theme music, Government's Boots? Y'all need to lick that off for all time's sake. Booyaka, Monka. Okay. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Monka, this rape and marriage bill will make young people not want to get married. Also, crime is out of control. Uh, what is going on? Young men in this country need help, which means love from other stronger men, showing them how to conduct themselves as young men. Hey, I was trying to tell you long time about them expats at Bahama. They haven't got all of them yet. Listen, I'm a justice of the peace. And in the district of New Providence appeared before me a Negro man. Let me tell you, this government is opposed to corruption. Go ahead. Um, good afternoon to all. It's not the Bahamians that treat the immigrants bad. It's their own that are ready, that are ready straight to take advantage of them. We as Bahamians welcome them. Hmm. This is powerful. I never heard the senator say he loved the Bahamian people. Of course I love the Bahamian people. Uh, you must people. say it now then. You must say it now. Listen to me. I told you before that the Bahamians are my right eye. The Haitians are my left eye. If I spoil the right or the left, I'm disfigured. All right? I love the Haitian people. I'm enchanted by them. I can feel the drums. I can hear the spirit. You hear me? I don't want to go that way because I can reveal a lot of mysticism. All right? I love the Bahamian people. 
I love the Haitian people. I love all people. And the Haitian people deserve love and respect. And their children who were born here in the Bahamas must be liberated with citizenship. I ain't listening to y'all black racists. I ain't listening to y'all. You hear me? The Haitian people is our people. All right? Y'all stop it. Go ahead. Mr. Monka, you don't think that we are being overrun by the Haitians? Why are you promoting this Haitian movement? I'm not the promoting Bahamians it. I am saying that those who were born in the Bahamas... Yes, they, Article 7 deals with that. They must be given justice. If a boat arrives, right? And the defense force is doing their job and not embarrassing, tell us better. See, I have my intelligence. All right? Because Papa... The Red Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram first alerted to me that he was suspicious of the first boat. And Hubert Alexander Ingram, by the grace of God, told me that he was suspicious that the first Haitian boat, the FNM, put it there. You heard what I say? And I'm a sensible man. I'm not going to get up on radio and TV and say that Hubert Ingram told me that. All right? Papa said to me, we were having breakfast. Papa said to me, I'm suspicious of that boat. I said, Papa, what do you mean? Papa say he's suspicious that the FNM bring the Haitian boat there. Papa ain't no fool. And he told it to me so that I could check. And I'm checking. All right? Don't forget, Minister just came out of Haiti. And you saw it when Minister said, when he introduced Frankie Campbell? Did you saw that videotape? Huh. Anyway, spiritual riser, read text. Yeah, let's don't, let's don't go down that road. Um, good day, um, Mr. Advisor. I love how you read those scriptures, but that fellow on the side of you is not safe. And those words don't mean to think to him. He could beat up all he want on the FNM in minutes. But Dame Joan Sawyer is waiting on him. As a matter of fact, um, ask Mr. Munker if he's a real Catholic or fake one. Spiritual advisor, sometimes you try to pull Munker from going over the cliff. And he don't want to be saved. Let him pop his neck for being hard head. You're very unkind. Booyaka! Mr. Monica, so why you want Bahamian women to follow you when you love Haitians so much? I want the Bahamian woman to follow me because they have pure in heart. All right? We have to love the Haitian people because they are of African descent. And we are of African descent. There are people. Slave boat went to Haiti. And one came here to Nassau. There are people. And as long as the world exists, the Haitian will be with us. You hear me? There are people. And let me give you a confession. I got some close relatives who are Haitian. And I have some close relatives who are of Jamaican and Haitian descent. Now, what you want me to do? They're very educated. They're right in the community. I am related to them. And I have a duty to provide good leadership. And that's all I'm doing. All right? The Haitian is going to be with us. And let's love them. All right? Let's love them. They are people. And they are great. All right? Stop hating black people. People, stop it and give the Haitian a hug. All right? Go ahead, my spiritual uh, Mrs. Monka, what is going on at the Stephen Dillard Primary School? I understand that the teachers have sat out for two days now. That is true. There is a principal who called the police for me. What was her name? Phyllis Johnson. Phyllis Johnson is the principal. She's a very unkind woman. I was there. She called police for me, and as I was leaving, one of the teachers showed to me that that was the district officer, Newball niece, and I announced it. I said, Newball niece didn't treat me well, but by grab, bright and early, Newball came to see me, and he said to me, he's not related to Phyllis Johnson, and I apologized to him. I said, listen. The teachers them say she is your niece. But he said he's not related to her. So this is a woman who 
is a fanatical FNM. She's fanatical. She doesn't want any union to meet. And she is up against the right person. Melinda Wilson. Melinda no mess around. All right? And they better stop trying to break the union. Because let me tell you something. Melinda Wilson is a Baintown woman. And let me tell you. When Baintown woman catch a fire, what happens, spiritual advisor? I think that's even... Even the devil... Yeah. Then run. Okay, Mr. Okay. Manka, they're saying that Haitians are saying that Jack Creole doesn't sound like the people of Haiti. That and is true. They say Ingram was the worst prime minister ever. Listen to me. My English doesn't sound like the people of England, nor the people of the Bahamas. My Haitian, does, my Haitian Creole doesn't sound like that. That is true. I don't run away from that, you know. I'm not a highly educated man. So, I don't run away from those things. But I have enough Creole... Pour dire haïtien, dire anglais, liquido, mama. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Monka, the only thing you do, it's same as if, is you sow division and discord among the Bahamian people. How? Uh, we think you should re be re rebuked according to the Bible. Listen, we must love the Haitian people. They are people. You hear me? We have to love them. Okay? Listen, the Haitian people are wonderful people. Okay? Take it from me. If you don't believe me, ask Minis. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Munker. I'm just wondering, with all that is going on in the country today, so disappointed about the election results, um, should we be voting in the 22 election? Let me pray over it. Fellow Brave Davis has told me on Saturday that he's committed to a good and transparent government. So, we have enough time to make up our minds. Currently, I'm on the beach. But if Philip Brave Davis continue to provide the good opposition that he and I, Chester Cooper, and Fred Mitchell are providing, listen to me, when the next election come, Minis, his ministers, and my party, the FNM, will be defeated. Y'all take it care. Take it care. Listen to the police. Love my people. Love all people. This is Freedom March. Rodney and I say good night. Good night. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved.